I think as human beings and as people, we naturally tend to keep quiet and silent about medical difficulties that we're dealing with, especially when it comes to conditions that we previously didn't really understand before. And as we close out Women's Month, we shine the spotlight this morning on polycystic ovarian syndrome in an effort to let women know out there that uh, they don't need to suffer alone or in silence. And of course, a woman who is championing this struggle is a South African TV personality, Lala Hirayama, who is joining us on Expresso this morning with her multidisciplinary medical doctor, Uncle Russell Cooper. <laughs> and uh, they're going to be sharing more about the home, the hormonal disorder with us. So good to have the family in Aww, studio. Okay. Lala, we should actually yeah. say international. We can't even say national anymore. No, international. international. <laughs> and Dr. Cooper, so good to Thank have you. you on the couch with us this morning as well. Well, it's well, time for us to get into our very first question. Yeah, yeah. well, Lala, polycystic ovarian syndrome, I think a lot of people don't understand what it's all about. Mm -hmm. What happened when you were diagnosed? What were some of the changes you noticed in your body? Um, right, so like you were saying, not a lot of people know about mm -hmm. this disorder. And funny enough, it is the most common female endocrine disorder in the world, uh, sure. experienced by a woman, but yet it's such a mysterious condition, yeah. right? So one of the reasons why it's so difficult to diagnose and why so many women don't get diagnosed is because of the symptoms that are so similar to PMS. Okay. So in the beginning, I, I was a teenager that suffered from really bad skin. Um, I bloated a lot, I had some pain, but that was all I thought was from PMS. Being a woman is hard, right? <laughs> it is. It's Preach. hard. And I mean, that, those are just like the, the things that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, just being a woman. So I lived with that pretty much right until I was 27. I had the bad skin. I had been on skin medication and all sorts of things because I just thought this was my body. This was yeah. who I was. Um, and then one day I uh, realized I was, I was actually quite stressed. And before I knew it, my skin started breaking out really bad, worse than usual, on my chest, on my back, on my neck. My hair was starting to fall out a bit. Sure. I was starting to gain the weight. I was craving weird things. I was getting a bit of body pain. I was like, okay, so this is kind of like PMS vibes, but on steroids. Yeah. Mm. Something's wrong. But it took that, that, it took that flare, that yeah. you know, severity of the symptoms for me to go, I need to get checked. Exactly, okay. exactly. Mm. Dr. Cooper, how does, from a medical point of view, how does ovarian or other cis polycystic ovarian syndrome present itself in a woman's body? I mean, up until Lala saw that, she didn't really know what was going on. Mm. So, you know, medically we use the term um, heterogeneous, which is a hectic name, meaning there are so many facets to this condition. Okay. Yeah. So on one level, as Lala described, they're the hormonal side of, um, it's really excess estrogens and excess androgens, and androgens are the male hormones yeah. that cause the acne and the hirsutism, which is the hair growth, almost like sideburns and a moustache. So, mm. so very unsightly and very difficult for a woman, and often that's what brings a woman to a doctor. But there's the other more sinister side, which is the insulin resistance component essentially saying that insulin, which removes sugar into muscles and into fat, is not able to attach to its receptor. Okay. And the consequence of that is very high insulin levels and then weight gain and the tendency towards type 2 diabetes, which can then even go on to cardiovascular disease. Sure. You know, this is a very, very difficult condition for women to handle. There's an increased risk of cancer, of endometrial cancer as well. But the, 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 the critical part is that this is polycystic ovarian syndrome. The vast majority of women have underdeveloped multiple cysts on their ovaries. Mm. And those cysts are there as a consequence of way too much of the androgens, the male hormones, being stimulated in the ovarian tissue and causing these widespread systemic effects throughout the body. It's a very difficult condition to treat even medically. Sometimes, um, you know, in conventional medicine, the pill is used. Women often react to the pill. That's a problem. Okay. Or they use this drug called metformin, which can improve insulin sensitivity, but a lot of people can react to that as well. Okay. So unfortunately, it's a, it's a poorly managed condition because okay. it, there's even inflammation. There are gene mutations and gene polymorphisms. There are oxidation elements to it. It is a very complex condition. Sure. It sounds very complex, yeah. and it's great that we're putting the spotlight on it today. Mm -hmm. Dr. Cooper, how common is it among women? You know, it's extraordinarily common. About one in seven to one in eight women. So somewhere between 10 to 15 percent of women sure. um, have this condition. And for the vast majority of them, about 70 percent of them, they actually don't even know they have it. 
as Lali mentioned, it's just this thing of, oh, well, I'm putting on too much weight. I've got a bit of acne, but you know, this yeah. is what happens is my hormones yeah. are kicking in. And so I'll go and get some facial treatments and do a bit mm. of laser and, you know, sort of go to the gym more and sort of watch my diet. Keep and treating the symptoms. Yeah, Meanwhile, back yeah. at the ranch. Back at the ranch, yeah, major yeah. problems. Mm. Well, we are going to be continuing this important and fascinating discussion with Lala Hirayama and Dr. Russell Cooper a little bit after the break. So stay tuned, especially if you are suffering with this hormonal disorder as a woman in South Africa, because when we return, we will show you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's my feel good birthday show. Well, we're back with TV personality Lala Hiriyama, who is here with her uncle, multidisciplinary medical doctor, Dr. Russell Cooper, to chat about the hormonal disorder known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. And we're about to discuss what treatment options are available for this ailment. Exactly. Now, before we took our break, I was just like, what is the light at the end of the tunnel? Dr. Cooper, what treatments are available in South Africa for this syndrome? Um. So forgive me if, you know, I, I live in Australia, even though I'm originally from South Africa, but the treatments are international. Okay. And from a conventional point of view, usually a woman will start on either metformin, which is an insulin sensitizing drug used in diabetes as a frontline treatment. And, the, and this drug metformin is very effective in improving the insulin receptor resistance. Think of it your car key yeah. normally fits into your starter motor, and if yeah. the two mix and match, then signal transduction takes place and the electronics come on and you drive your car. Yeah. So imagine if there's something in the starter motor. So you put your key in and it doesn't connect. Mm. Your car doesn't drive. So when insulin attaches to the insulin receptor and it doesn't go through the process of, of awakening all the sub-substrate um, yeah. sub molecules to get the message through, mm. then insulin levels stay high. And one of the main functions of insulin is to remove sugar from the system. It also has lots of growth factors and proliferative events. But if it cannot remove sugar from the system, then those higher sugar levels can lead to type 2 diabetes mm. and, and, and weight gain yeah. and cardiovascular disease. So the conventional treatment is just this, to use this drug. However, a lot of people cannot take this drug. Okay. They have lots of side effects, gastrointestinal side effects. And so if they can't take the drug, the insulin resistance side of things is not dealt with. Okay. Women also get put on the pill, and the pill is, is good. It has many advantages, but it has many disadvantages mm -hmm. as well, because this is a hyperestrogenic condition, and the pill is 300 times more potent as an estrogen than one's body's yeah. normal estrogen. So, so sometimes the pill through um, central mechanisms will reduce the androgens and reduce the estrogens and that in itself helps. But if you can't take the pill, then you're in trouble. Remember, a lot of women come to a doctor because their cycle is very irregular or they can't fall pregnant, suggesting that they're not ovulating correctly. And in fact, the Rotterdam criteria, which are the definitive criteria for the diagnosis of PCOS, is one that you've got hyperandrogens, too many male hormones, or that you have none or very poor ovulation. Okay. And the third being that you, on ultrasound, have polycystic ovaries. But believe it or not, even men can have PCOS. Obviously, guys don't have ovaries, thank goodness. But, <laughs> but guys can also, who are born from mothers who have PCOS, can have the same obesity syndrome, okay. type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, the same stigmata that, that affects women who have this condition. Wow. Okay. So from a, con from a nutritional medicine point of view, I've worked with women for about 30 years with hormone disorders, and I've found a group of specific nutrients and um, um, anti-inflammatory herbs like curcumin, together with minerals, beautiful minerals like chromium, which sensitizes the, estrogen uh, the, the insulin receptor, mm -hmm. um, herbs that improve progesterone and that also lower the estrogen tide. And all these factors together work by centrally reducing the enormous stress on the ovaries, mm -hmm. um, which then stops the individual follicles from maturing to a dominant follicle, which, which can then be released under um, central hormones called um, luteinizing hormone. This very de delicate balance between follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone gets terribly disturbed. So there's okay. way too much of this strong luteinizing yeah. hormone. The follicle never develops, so it's underdeveloped. Women don't ovulate. They end up with all these androgens causing all these skin conditions. Yeah. Okay. They, 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 their period is all over the place. And don't forget, this is a condition of tremendous mental despair. They have anxiety. They have depression. They are, um, it's a very hard condition to live with. Yeah. 
We just hope this stuff works for us. Okay. Well, I know that the two of you are working on something very special. Do you mind sharing that with us? Okay, so uh, the story of how it all came about was I was on the conventional medicine, mm -hmm. um, which really reacted badly for me. Okay. Um, I had been on the pill since I was a kid, but then when I went back onto it, my body didn't react the same way. Yeah. Um, and I put on nine kilos sure. in two months. Wow. When you're on TV, it's, it's a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> More than yeah. nine. <laughs> you know, because the, the camera adds quite a few pounds. Exactly. <laughs> gonna say. So, um, obviously, you know, and I, people were really mean on social media. Your friends, your family don't understand. They don't understand what this condition is. So they're like, what is wrong with you? You're 27 years old. You've got adult acne. Um, you're losing your hair. You Get your life together. Come mm. on, Lola. What's wrong with you? Um, and I was just trying everything under the sun. Yeah. After I realized that conventional medicine wasn't working, I went on to different natural herbs. I was doing all the research I could on the internet and scouring all these different studies and realizing, oh, well, that herb works and that. So I went to you know the different stores and I was spending thousands and thousands of rands every month just trying to get some relief from these yeah. symptoms because it doesn't just affect you physically, emotionally course, and, yeah. and mentally. Yeah. So eventually I realized months and months and months later, nothing's working, mm -hmm. nothing's changing. I gave my uncle a call. This is also after seeing four doctors. I yeah. gave my uncle a call and I said, listen, um, Uncle Dr. Russell, <laughs> I, need, I need some help. Yeah. So he says, listen, I need you to grab the, this, 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 and this, these herbs, these amino acids, these minerals. And I, I went around SA trying to find these things and I couldn't, well, at least some of them. Yeah. So I realized I got to bring them in from overseas. I tried, that got stopped at customs, they wouldn't let it in. So I thought, you know what, it's time for South Africans to have something made in South Africa for South Africans and for a, a disorder that so many women are experiencing. So that's how it was born. It's called Picos Support. Yeah. Um, and it is made for women who suffer from this condition in mind. But yeah. also, it has, it's all natural. Wonderful. And that's yeah, good. There you go. Oh, there we go. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. So it's called? Picos support. Picos support. And, and it's giving uh, you the support that you need to deal with polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's it. But women who are struggling with any kind of hormone yeah. issues, uh, as a woman, also can take the product. It's all natural and it's all safe. So for information, please check out our website, lifesource.org.za, or check us out on Instagram, life.source. Well, there you go. It is so important to shine the light on issues like this so we know mm -hmm. that you are not alone. We want to thank our beautiful guests, Lala Hirayama and Dr. Russell Cooper, for sharing this really important message regarding polycystic ovarian syndrome.